everyone and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. This is my podcast about knitting and crocheting and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Hi, my name is Carmen and you can find me here on the social medias and my website and stuff. And I'm very excited for today, can you tell? <laughs> I also feel a little bit witchy because I'm wearing orange. I never wear orange because it's kind of not a fashion color here in the Netherlands. It's kind of a very patriotic color or, you know, if you're into soccer or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I never really wear orange and it's a strange combination which makes me feel witchy. I, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm seeing a lot of witchy themed um, pictures on Instagram. Maybe it's because uh, Kemper from Junk Yarn has just launched this witchy yarn club. I think it's called Black Candle. Maybe it's because I'm looking into crystals. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling a little bit hyper. Let's cool it down. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I have a lot of fun knitting projects to show. I don't have any crochet, I don't think. No, it's going to be all knitting today because I've also not done any spinning. My spinning wheel is over there with the yarn swift on top. So it looks like a windmill. So, okay, <laughs> enough with the tangents. Um, so first exciting thing is we're gonna have a new cow and so a knit along or you could crochet along but we're going to make socks so you know if you want to crochet socks sure maybe we'll just call it a sock along then um i have yet to think of a concise name but we will start september 1st so that is next week already i think it's next week wednesday um i'm trying to get organized again because i haven't had a diary in year and a half. Uh, so I bought a moleskin diary that has so one page for every day, even for weekend days, so I can scribble notes in there, you know, however many I want. Um, so next Wednesday, September 1st, is going to be the start of our cow. I haven't decided yet whether I want to keep it going for uh, a month and a half or two months. Maybe one month is enough. Anyway, we will see about that. And the cow, uh, or the sock along, is going to be um, that you make a pair of socks to match with a pair of your shoes. Um, last week I asked on Instagram, uh, what do you wear socks with, your hand knit socks that is, because um, you know they're a little bit thicker than store-bought socks um, and a lot warmer and sometimes you can't wear them with all kinds of shoes. I know that I never wear them for hiking because um, then I always get blisters uh, much sooner anyway than if I wear store-bought socks. Uh, and I never wear them with heels, but that might be about to change. So I usually wear my hand at socks with boots and uh, sneakers, and many of you said that you also wore them with boots and sneakers, or just boots, or just, you know, so a cuff peeps out uh, above the boot. Um, uh, some of you just wear them around the house, which of course is also great, uh, but in case you don't wear them with shoes yet, or not with all kinds of shoes yet, I want to challenge you to uh, find a pair of socks that you can make that you will be able to wear with shoes. And um, I have chosen a specific pair of heels that I want to make socks for. And these are the heels in question. I bought them last year. I haven't worn them a ton yet. I think I've worn them um, a, a whopping three times uh, because uh, this little edge here uh, always makes my um, the, the skin on my feet bleed. So very comfortable. Uh, but so the last time I wore lots of band-aids on my uh, on my toes and it uh, it helped and then I thought what if I could make a little sock to just go over my toes so um, so you know I don't have to waste uh, tons of plastic band-aids every time and then I thought what if I just make full-length socks maybe just 
white with maybe some fair isle um, close to the cuff or maybe a lacy uh, pattern and a ruffled cuff or maybe knee highs and I think there are so many things I could try but I um, so I think I'm going for white or beige or any other very light color uh, to pair nicely with these and then I can wear these more um, so yeah, in my case, it will also mean that I wear the shoes more often. But I really want to challenge you to pick a uh, pair of shoes. Maybe, maybe it's a pair of shoes you wear all the time. Um, and you know, maybe you never wear hand knit socks in them because you like to knit very colorful socks. And if you wear them in your suit in your shoes outside, you're worried that you know people are gonna think you're weird. Um, and let me just tell you, it is very much okay to be weird, and actually, I prefer it if people are weird. Um, this uh, a couple a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, having this weird discussion with my boyfriend, and he was like, "Would you rather have people say that you're weird or that you're normal?" And I was like, "Ooh, no, I rather have people think I'm weird." So, right? But if you rather not wear um, very colorful socks outside, then maybe this time you want to go for a subdued um, pair of socks so that you can wear them outside and, you know, make you more comfortable. So I think it's really, really fun. Um, I will say that I don't have any prizes planned for this time. I am kind of uh, under a bit of pressure, so I would like this to be a very casual sock along, so I don't think I'm going to worry about prizes, so there's nothing really to gain from joining, except you end up with a pair of socks at the end, um, and the sock along is going to take place in my Facebook group, which is the New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew. So you can type that in on Facebook, um, and I'll make sure to link it in the description as well. Um, yeah, so New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew, and make sure you answer the questions. It's just like, do you do you like crochet or knitting? It's just to filter out. Um, robots or you know um yes so that will be happening september 1st next week and another thing will be happening september 1st and that is the launch of the tornado toes uh so the tornado toes are socks even though they don't look like it um they are socks without heels and the idea is that they are stretchy enough for heels anyway. They are very, very stretchy. In fact, uh, I made this size for, I made the smallest size from the pattern. It includes kid, teen, and adult sizes. Um, and I made the kid size and they fit me. And I only intended for the kid size to go to like a 10 years old, I don't know. The The only difference between the kid and teen sizes is the recommended length. Uh, and then the adult size is also uh, more stitches. But uh, yeah, uh, apparently they also fit me. Um, although I will say they look like angle socks on me. So I had to redo the bind off on these and I have made a little clip uh, to put in right now so you can see the difference between the two bind off methods that I tried and you can see um, how the socks actually fit on my feet so I will put that in right now hi this is Carmen from a few days before the podcast and I have recorded this earlier because I wanted you to see the two different cast off methods that I have chosen on the tornado Toes. This one um, was the first one that I did and I chose the Lori's Twisty Bind Off for this one and I really love the finish. It doesn't flare out or anything. It is very pretty. Um, I have done it 
rather tightly because at this point I still thought I was going to be able to find a kid model for, you know, to, to wear these socks. Uh, so I bound them off rather tightly. Um, but actually these socks also fit me, although they are then ankle socks uh, instead of mid-calf socks. Um, so this cast off is a little bit tightly for me, a little bit tight. Uh, so on the second one, uh, which I've just finished a few days ago, I have done Jeannie's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which is where you knit stitches together. Uh, and you can see that it is flaring quite a lot. It almost looks as if there's a ruffled edge, but it's just um, the cast off just being really stretchy. It is stretchier almost than the rest of the sock, um, which is great for getting it on your feet, uh, but also when it's not worn it just doesn't look very pretty, uh, and when it's on your feet you kind of see that it is roomy. So I'm going to put these on and show you how they fit. Alright, so I have both socks on here and this is with the tight, tighter bind off and this is with the loose bind off. And I j just get these on my feet barely, they barely go um, around my heel. Um, these go on very easily, but I can imagine they also slide down and come off very easily. So that, um, I am going to redo this one, also because I don't like the look. And yeah, I think this would get too stretchy very fast. Um, so I am going to redo this one. Um, to redo it with Lori's twisty bind off, but I'm going to do it looser than this one. Because while I was binding these off, I knew, you know, I uh, I was aiming for it to fit a child. So now that I know I will be doing it for me, um, I, I will see if I can do it a bit looser. And perhaps, you know, if that one fits, then fits really well, I think I'm going to redo this as well. I haven't uh, woven in the ends yet, so um, I will be able to do that easily. I do really like how they fit. Uh, don't mind my mosquito bites. Uh, there. <laughs> I do really like how they fit, and I, I like that, um, you know, you see the spiral kind of has a really nice effect um yeah and i will say that it is uh stretchy enough to go over the heel yeah so it just fits really nicely i have just redone the bind off on this one and if we stretch both socks out um, you can see that it is stretchier than the previous one. So I'm just going to try them on, and if they fit well, I'm going to redo that on the first sock as well. All right, and now I have completed the bind off on the other sock as well. Uh, so I did Lori's twisty bind off and uh, I did a little bit stretchier than I had done before. Um, and it works perfectly. Uh, I can get them on easier and uh, but not so easy that they want to slip off my feet. Um, the only thing that I would change if I were to make a second pair is that I would look into a different type of toe because um, when you put them on uh, you do still have to take into account that the toe you know the toe has to be the right way on so you can either put them on like this or like this um, so you know if you if you put them on it's 
uh, it's likely that you will have to twist it a little bit uh, so that your toes are nice and comfy in there. And I do believe that there is a pattern for toes that are circular, like the same all the way around. And I believe they are called whirlwind toes, which would be very uh, nice to have whirlwind toes and then the tornado toes sock pattern. Um, I do not know whether that is a cuff down or toe up pattern, um, but I do remember it from the Cherry Heart podcast. Uh, Sandra um, often uses that toe on her socks and I believe that she often does cuff down. So let me just um, look that up for you, whether there is a pattern for whirlwind toes toe up. Okay, so there is a pattern for whirlwind toes toe up, and I found it at the Yarmando blog, Yarmando A Glimpse at Dawn. So this is what it looks like. Maybe that will help you find it easier. And it says this pattern is derived from the Whirlpool Toe, which is a toe-up um, instruction for socks by Cat Bordy. You might know Cat Bordy from the Tomato Heel. Um, I do believe she passed away uh, earlier this year. Um, but her patterns, I believe, are still around. And uh, this pattern for the Whirlpool Toe is in her her uh, book, I think, New Pathways for Sock Knitters. So I think that for my next pair that I would do the Whirlwind Toe or the Whirlpool Toe um, so that it is spiral just like the rest of the sock and you can just pull it on without it mattering. Um, and I would actually advise others to do that too. Um, I have written this toe in the pattern simply because they haven't tried the other toe yet but um, I will see if I can put some links in there um, because I do that I do think that that would be the best experience really um, and so um, I thought that this would be perfect for kids uh, it still is but I thought it would actually be most suitable for kids and then for adults for adults it maybe wouldn't be so comfortable but actually <laughs> I'm finding these really comfortable myself uh, which I did not think that I would but yeah so give it a try and the beauty of this pattern is right that if you don't find it comfortable you can give it to someone else or, you know, to a kid or a cousin or um, to your friend, and it will probably fit them. So that's the beauty of it. Momo is scratching the blocking mats. Yeah, Momo. <laughs> and what I also, um, I think I saw this on a podcast of one of the testers uh, for this pattern, um, who was Alita. Uh, so Alita also has a podcast here, and I think it's called Terra Alita. Um, it's in Dutch, um, and she showed the uh, the socks that she was making, and uh, someone in the comments said that um, either she had knit those socks for a friend or. The point is, um, she knew that uh, this was a comfortable sock for people in wheelchairs um, because, you know, since they don't walk on their feet, or most of them don't, um, or at least find it more comfortable to be sitting, um, there is less chance of, you know, the sock dropping or the heel not being super comfortable. And uh, what I have gathered from my research so far. If you don't know, I have a blog post on my website with, um, you know, if you want to make garments or accessories for people who use wheelchairs a lot, um, what you kind of have to think about. And from what I have gathered is that um, with putting on socks or anything on your legs, it's all about dexterity. Uh, so 
that is easy to put on and I think having a sock where it doesn't matter how you put it on that's going to be really helpful so um, yeah so I don't know if I will make another pair but I'm really curious to see how it will work out uh, with a circular toe as in it's the same on all sides um, so yes, and this pattern will also be coming on September 1st, so ne next week Wednesday, and I will be having a discount for the first couple of days, so please do um, keep an eye out for that, because there won't be a new podcast episode before that time. So uh, make sure you either follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my newsletter, so you will um, see when the pattern is live and uh, so you can make use of the discount code. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for the release of this pattern. I will um, also be posting the pictures of the testers um, in the pattern as well and they look super cute. Some of them have uh, modeled the socks on their kids and it just looks so cute and um, I was very very pleased to hear that they were as comfortable as I was hoping them to be and you know some people are going to be fussy about socks but there's always a chance that someone will not find the socks comfortable there's always a chance of that um, even with cables or lace or a texture pattern um, yes so I think that that was what I wanted to chat about for the cow and the sock pattern launch. Another thing that I've been doing the past couple of weeks is that I have made chart videos. So I am working on a three-part video series of how to make your own charts and these are uh, published on my Patreon page. Um, so I consider my Patreon page to be a kind of paid version of my YouTube channel. So you can find all kinds of exclusive tutorial videos on there and um, and the newest series is the How to Make Charts series. So in the first episode, I looked at uh, how to make color work charts. Um, the second episode is how to make lace knitting charts and also cable knitting charts, actually. So knitting charts. And the third episode, which I will be publishing next week, um, also on Wednesday. I seem to be doing a lot on Wednesdays. Um, the third part will be on crochet charts, which is a little bit more uh, difficult, but um, yeah, therefore also a lot more exciting um, for you to have in your skill set. Um, so yes, that is available on my Patreon page for all tiers and um, I will be revamping my Patreon page shortly because as of now I have three tiers so you can choose the level at which you want to subscribe. I have Rosewood, Willow and Elder and those uh, tier names uh, are based on Harry Potter wand uh, like wood types. And uh, I always thought it was really, really, really cute but of course now with JK Rowling being really transphobic and horrible, I want to remove uh, that kind of association. Um, and also, uh, I was I was just thinking about revamping it and making it something more me instead of just some random thing. So, um, uh, and I think I found the thing that I want to revamp it towards, and that is uh, Apple species apple variations um uh, if you don't know my uh my grandpa he passed away earlier this year um in may and he was an apple farmer um or you know he had other types of fruit as well he had apples pears i think he had plums um walnuts too gooseberries um and the really small red berries that you sometimes put on your pancakes or stuff um, and you know, all uh, rhubarb. Um, I remember just eating lots of um, mashed apples and also mashed rhubarb and blueberry cupcakes. And you know, my my grandma, she was uh, she could bake the most 
delicious things. Um, so yes, a lot of fruit pies and um, yeah, but mostly apples. That was what he was known for. And uh, there's still a very large fruit weighing scale in the garage. So um, yeah, when um, when I was little, he used to put me on there. <laughs> but um, yeah, it only goes to like five kilos or so. Um, yeah, and um, so most of his fruit was sold to an auction center where from there it will, would go to the supermarkets. And um, yeah, he was quite well known for his apples. And when they debuted uh, a new apple species, uh, which is called Elstach, um, it's my favorite apple. It was his favorite apple, it was the best sold apples. Um, and he was one of the first farmers to have that um, here. It was kind of, uh, he was in, in a kind of testing group. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the first harvests of that apple, I don't know if it was the first harvest here in uh, our region, Limburg or in the Netherlands, I don't know. But uh, the first uh, harvest came from my grandpa and um, yeah, it became a success. So I think that I want to rename the tier names, uh, the tiers to apples. So I'm thinking Jonagold, Golden Delicious and Elstar because obviously Elstar is the best. Um, and yeah, so I think I want to do that. Uh, I, I just, it, it lights me up to think about that and I'm so proud of him and you know he was uh, a business owner, an entrepreneur and uh, I'm an entrepreneur too and he often would ask me like how the business is going and uh, he never downplayed it or anything and I just I just love that so yeah um, yeah <laughs> I, I think I want to do something with that and I, I've also been thinking about doing some apple color work patterns although I do have to tweak it because I don't know where my swatch is but um, I want to show you okay here's the swatch I made and my boyfriend could not tell that they were apples so I think I still have to do some tweaking but uh, yeah, it's it's difficult to do it with just two colors. So I imagined this as an apple just cut cut in half and then with seeds in them. But you know, they look more like butterflies or something. So uh, yeah, I think I want to um, do something with apples in that way to kind of uh, yeah because part of my family so yes yeah so that's coming I changed the to the tier names and uh, I think it also ties in nicely with new leaf designs I mean I'm I've always been fascinated by nature and my grandpa taught me a lot about plants and um, yeah so I'm very excited about this uh, so yes please do come and support me on my patreon page um, if you like the podcast I wanted to continue because I'm not really getting anything from this podcast other than enjoyment um, so um, yeah please do go and support me on my patreon page and you can get awesome rewards in return and I'll just really quickly explain the different tiers because I know it can be quite confusing which one you need to pick. So the first one, which is now still called Rosewood, that's basically the uh, the main tier. You can get the tutorial videos um, access on there. Um, the second one, Willow, that is if you want the exclusive tutorial videos. And you get a couple more included in that tier and you also get PDF patterns included in there. So whenever I'm uh, doing a tutorial video on a pattern, for example, my Around the World sweater, this pattern is a free pattern on my blog. It's, it's all written out on my blog. Um, so for the rosewood level, you get the tutorial videos, but you have to go to my blog to, um, to view the pattern. Uh, for the willow tier, uh, I've also included the PDF pattern in there. So for, for things like this, if you just want the package, uh, like 
tutorial videos and PDF uh, pattern if applicable, then you get that. And then the elder tier, so that is the highest tier, um, that includes all of it and also uh, specific videos on, you know, how to customize things. Uh, um, for example, for the sweater cowl, um, the sweater tutorial videos, I've also done a video on how to customize your sweater. Uh, how to calculate things for your size. There is a video on how to how to design a half pie shawl. There's uh, a whole series called Designer Talk um, in which I talk about all kinds of things that you know designers or uh, other business owners in the craft branch what, what kind of things we come across like how to get your products out there, how to pitch to magazines, things like that. So um, yeah so that's really if you want the entire package, all of the things that I offer, so the uh, tutorial videos, the PDF patterns, and also a designer's point of view. So that is kind of the tiers explained in not a very short manner, but anyway. Um, so yes, every pat Patreon subscriber is very much appreciated. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, yes, and there are a lot of fun things coming to the Patreon page. Um, next up, I have some progress on my wild strawberry socks. And thank you so much for the feedback on last um, the last episode. Because uh, these socks, you don't see it as well in the um, solid color version. But these socks, uh, they are called the Wild Strawberry Socks and the pattern is inspired by the Bohus knitting style, which uh, is known for combining color work with pearl stitches. And this is not a traditional Bohus design, especially because it's for socks. And Bohus was traditionally, you know, it was a very uh, high class, very, um, you know, um, not, not posh, maybe, maybe posh, yeah, just <laughs> celebrity style, uh, clothing, uh, and socks doesn't really fit in that, but, um, yeah, so they're very luxurious socks. Um, so last time I talked a bit about this and about the, uh, some of the history around, uh, Bohus Stickning, and, uh, thank you so much for the lovely feedback on that, because, um, I'm just happy that I'm not the only knitting geek for, uh, you know, knowing more about, uh, the history of things, and with, um, and I am actually inspired to do more uh, in that genre. So uh, earlier this month, on August 15th, it was Granny Square Day. And I'm actually tempted to do a podcast, like, entire history of Granny Squares. And, like, uh, go digging, like, where where did the granny square come from and what was the very first publication and stuff like that um, evolution through the years um, I think I would really like that so let me know if you like that too so I did a little bit uh, on these socks um, I often take it with me when we're in the car when we go driving somewhere and I can do a couple of rows um, it's mindless enough so that I can kind of do it without looking all the time at my work. Uh, but yeah, I am just <laughs> just a little bit of progress. This is the second sock and uh, in a while I will be arriving at the heel and then I get to do the dreaded heel flap again. I'm not good at doing heel flaps so um, that's why I prefer toe up socks or cuff down with a shorter heel. So yes, hopefully more next time. And then I have also finished a sock. So another sock that I was just, you know, doing a few rows on every once in a while are my No Pearl Toe Up socks. It's been a long time since you've seen this. Uh, you may remember my No Pearl Cuff Down. And the name says it, you do not have to purl for these socks. Uh, they have short rows, but the short rows, uh, I mean short row heels, the short row heels are done in garter stitch, so that means you knit all stitches. And the toe up version has that as well. 
and it just it looks so snuggly it just the garter stitch makes it one want to like squish back and uh, when you wear it it kind of stretches out and it feels very comfortable actually um, and then the cuff I did in garter stitch too and this is the cuff down sock so you knit the little piece of garter first and then you pick up stitches and knit the knit the sock down but for co up the difficult part was at the end so um, so I just cast on for a sock as I usually do um, you can if you want to do that too I have these simple toe up socks uh, tutorial videos here on my uh, YouTube channel uh, so up until the heel it was all the same and then the the heel is basically the same except every time you would purl you knit so that was all no problem and then I continued up and then then I knit the cuff so I cast on some stitches and I knit the cuff sideways uh, just de decreasing uh, a stitch every time I come to the main part of the sock again and um, so basically you have a garter ridge for every stitch that is on your sock which uh, makes this cuff uh, wider than this cuff and you know it doesn't really matter uh, you will see uh, what I mean in the pattern but uh, it means that this sock when you wear it it's going to be more like this and when you wear this sock it will be a little bit denser so it will be more like this so this will look more like garter and this will look more like as if you knitted ribbing so yes very exciting um, I am knitting this with some yarn that I bought from Sandra's craftfulness she doesn't dye yarn anymore uh, I think this was her very last colorway uh, last dance or one last dance or something like that um, and this was also by Sandra's craftfulness and it was a mini set that she did and um, it's one of my very uh, first matching <laughs> pairs of socks um, yes and it's just delightful yarn and I'm looking forward to do the second one um, yes and I am planning for these two patterns to come out sometime this year as well just um, they are not a priority right now so please do know that that I'm not going to be publishing it next week um, but I did want to show you and it was so much fun to knit this so much fun I'm really looking forward to uh, knitting the next one um, I will say that I would want to know how to do Kitchener stitch so that it looks like pearl stitch because where I Kitchenered, Kitchenered the uh, cuff together you can see that but yeah I'm not too bothered one last sock related thing that I have been doing is mending socks so I kind of ran out of I didn't kind of I ran out of things to mend and um, I'm <laughs> I kind of really got in the groove of mending um, if you don't know I have a mending course on my patreon page as well that is called darn it uh, mending masterclass so I put a request on my Instagram and on my Facebook page um, if anyone had holy socks or a sweater with a hole in it um, uh, that I could mend and Eline from Crealine Design she had three pairs of socks this one is from her boyfriend and I am very intrigued about this heel because look at it I don't know which heel it is um, so this is the side and there is like this strip of knitting and then I don't know I am I'm guessing it's just increases and no short rows so very intriguing uh, and there was a hole here and I mended that and I just have this these stitch markers here because 
uh, they were holding the stitches. Um, so I mended it with a blue and two yellows and I think that fits quite nicely. And if you like to see how I mend this, of course I have my mending masterclass and I also put a reel up on Instagram where I mend this in uh, 30 seconds. So uh, that is quite fun to see. Uh, and I have two more of her socks here. One is this gorgeous color work sock that has a hole here. Um, and I think I'm going to attempt a color work mend as well. So I'm, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, because I don't know if I can do that. So it's quite a big hole, so I'm looking forward to doing that. I am uh, grateful that I didn't rip out any of the, um, you know, the, the short row stitches, the, the double stitch stitches, because I wouldn't know. I mean, I guess I could just sew it, kind of. Um, yeah, but most of it I'm doing with duplicate stitching or Swiss darning, and all of that is included in the uh, Darn It Masterclass. Um, and I think this was a uh, just a merino base. I'm not sure, because it looks quite worn through. So I think this was a merino. Um, but I always mend it with... Uh, or I mend socks with uh, a yarn that also contains nylon. I mend it with uh, Scapius, uh, Scapius Metropolis. And then this one, which I think is hand spun, I think she said that in the email. Um, it's beautiful. Oh, and then I went to I went to look at her um, Instagram page. So Kayaline Design. She she's a yarn dyer, by the way. So if you want amazing yarn, go check her out. Um, and yeah, so she does a lot of spinning as well. It's beautiful. Um, and it has a hole here, right here. So it's it's almost worn through, but the, there is still a tiny bit of the stitch intact. So I'm actually not going to stretch it too much because this is a like a pearl side and I want to know how to uh, duplicate stitch on the pearl side, so I'm gonna keep that intact. And I have this little scrap of Escapia's Downtown, which is a self-striping yarn, and I think that really matches the vibe of this sock. I think, you know, with, with the green and, and pink, it kind of... I think it goes really nicely with that. So I think I'm gonna use this scrap for this sock. And for this one, I have to see because, as I said, I don't really wear orange a lot, so I don't have a lot of orange yarn. Um, but I think I might do a teal because I love it, or a yellow, so maybe. I just, yeah, really looking forward to this. I really actually like this stuff. Uh, I have two more socks on the way here from Emily, so... Thank you, Emily. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. Uh, if you have socks with holes or a sweater, I'm desperate to fix a sweater. Please do uh, send me an email at hello at newleafdesigns.nl. You will have to pay for shipping both ways, but um, I will do the mending for free. So yeah, win-win. So yes, that was another thing that I've been doing and I plan to make more short videos of the things that I mend. So now for some stash enhancement. I haven't bought yarn in a while. Um, most of the yarn that I have been receiving is yarn from Scapius that I have. You know, I get that uh, as a sponsorship for my patterns. Um, and this uh, is the well, it's not the first yarn that I bought this year, definitely not. But um, it was the first yarn in a while. I got it from Wild and Wooly in London. Wild and Wooly. And I love their packaging tape. So I got some skeins of Ba Ram Yu. Their, oops, their Titus yarn. 
and it was all paper packaging so I was very very grateful for that and I bought these because um, I know this yarn is going to be discontinued and I have some of this in my stash I have two skeins of this already one skein of this and then one of a kind of burnt orange caramel type um, and I really want to knit a sweater and I wanted to knit it at a really loose gauge because uh, it just feels so nice and I think it would feel very nice as a flowy fabric but then seeing that um, it has alpaca in there so it has 30% alpaca and alpaca I think I really want to knit that at a tighter gauge because alpaca is prone to um, uh, getting longer so if you knit a dress uh, knit a sweater out of it it will be a dress in time if you um, you know if you use 100% alpaca because this is 70% wool uh, and 70% British wool um, a blend of 50% Wensleydale long wool 20% blueface luster and 30% alpaca all from Britain 100% British spun and dyed in Yorkshire um, so yes I'm very excited about this and I believe that they did not have any more stock of Wensleydale at the actual mill uh, so I believe that this will be discontinued so it was uh, really heavily discounted at uh, Wild and Woolly and you know that was perfect because I thought I was running out and so I bought the last few skeins of this and then you know I thought why not buy a fourth one so I got this one as well and I think uh, if I have some leftover of this that that would be so beautiful so um, yeah oh I didn't finish my thought in the beginning so at first I thought I wanted to knit it at a loose gauge but because of the alpaca um, I think I want to knit it at a very tight gauge and then I would need more yarn so hence my yarn purchases um, yes and because it is also a little bit scratchy just a little bit I am uh, I can usually you know cope well with scratchiness or itchiness but I think I might want to make this into a cardigan instead of a sweater um, but I'm not sure if I can steek this or if I will have to knit it as a sweater so um, yes we will see I have also purchased some buttons in this cute little paper bag um, and they are wooden buttons and yeah I wasn't really looking for any specific kind of buttons I just I saw that they have them they were cheap and wooden and I thought yeah I will probably use those sometime so I bought it um, yeah so I bought it mainly from Wild and Willy because well they sale they still had a lot of stock um, and also because they had a sale but then uh, I have to pay customs charge because of Brexit so I'm not sure if I actually profited from the sale but <laughs> yeah so I got some lovely skeins um, and who knows when I'll be able to knit with that but I've already started swatching so it might be sooner rather than later but we will see and then another well I'm not sure if I could call this stash enhancement it's uh, a project that I bought and this is actually a very exciting thing let me show you let me hold it up I bought this can you guess what it is just pause the video and let me know what you think it is um, it is by Lorette Carmen. Um, you can find her on Instagram by this handle, Lorette Carmen. And she is from the Amsterdam Steek. I think uh, it's, it's kind of a knitting school, I think. Uh, they give a lot of workshops and I think right now she is in Denmark. Um, I can 
say the name of the school for me, but I won't try to pronounce it, um, which is also kind of knitting school. And they do amazing experiments there with color, like overlapping colors. And just look through her Instagram. <sighs> I get such a flurry of inspiration every time that I look at her account and I'm like, yes, I want to do more like this, like art and like um, creating paintings with fiber and not really making a garment or anything, but art. And um, so earlier this year, she made a post about uh, these embroidery books um, and she calls them Vacantie du Boek or is it Bordure du Boek? Anyway, um, if you're Dutch you will know Vacantie du Boek. <laughs> uh, in, in English it it's almost the same, a vacation do book. So do you remember when you were a kid and uh, in the summertime they would have these bigger versions of magazines so and they would be do books so uh, you would maybe have your favorite comics in there and then some puzzles and um you know color prints things that you can color in um and yeah, I just really, really loved that. Each summer when we went on holiday, uh, I was looking forward to choosing my Vacancy Du Book. And actually this year I was kind of sad that, you know, as adults we don't really have that anymore. Um, and I was reminded of that when my mom gave me this magazine and it was the, uh, like, a double issue uh, with puzzles and crosswords and I was like oh remember when we had that as kids and uh, but you know I I don't necessarily want puzzles I want creative stuff so then when Lorette came with this idea of an embroidery holiday book I was like yes I want this so uh, so I ordered one and you know it took them a while like three months but it's here and uh, I mean these things are hand-picked so I really appreciate the the effort that went into these and you know they're I think they they only made a hundred of them so I feel very very privileged that I have one so it comes with fabric and uh, some papers and some yarn and I've arranged them in rainbow order although not a technical rainbow because I think usually a rainbow goes from red to violet but details uh, so there are some lovely yarns in there I think these are hand dyed uh, there is some embroidery thread in there. Uh, this is some old DMC uh, pour tapisserie. So it's for making tapestry, like rugs. It's 100% wool. Uh, this one as well. I, I have some of this in a box over there, uh, just plain white. This is Peyton's tapestry wool. Can you see? Peyton's. Um, and it has a little beehive logo on there. Really, really cute. Uh, this, I think, is hand dyed as well. Um, don't know what it is, but probably wool. And this one as well. Some more embroidery thread. Then this feels a bit cottony. Really pretty. And then this, wow, <laughs> neon yellow. Um, and then this one, which just, oh, this is um, mending yarn, Maas Gare. So they use this to uh, mend socks. Uh, it says extra strong, 15 meters, and it's uh, from an old Dutch brand. Look at that. Isn't that the cutest? Just, oh, my heart is just... 
look at it. So yes, treasures like this. And then there is a little, um, I want to say logo, but it's not logo, label with some silk thread, I think. I think it's silk because it sticks to each other like crazy. And it says, <laughs> there, it says, Bordure du bouc van. Uh, no, Bordure, that means embroidery. Dagboek, that means diary, van, from, van, uh, of. And then you can embroider your own name. It's so cute! So, uh, yeah. And then the needle with some silk thread. Oh my god. So, yes, just unpacking this was a treat in itself. And then, so there are some papers in here, and there are some old prints from books. Uh, there is an old knitting pattern in here, and this is Olive from Popeye. And there is a uh, pattern in there for a uh, knitted dress. And here there are some... <sighs> so cute. Um, this, I think, is uh, for inspiration. Um, lovely succulents and flowers. And then some old it's it's a pattern for a baby cardigan or something yeah just oh, this is so cute um wait i put it together wrong there we go uh there is a italian i think italian embroidery paper in here. Look, is that is that Italian? Can someone tell me? And then, oh, so beautiful. There is, um, oh, this is fabric. So this is like a doll that you can dress with fabrics and embroidery. It's this, this I love. Remember the dolls that you could cut out and then you could cut out clothes and like fold it around them. I love that. Uh, there is uh, an alphabet here for embroidery. Oh, and this this is a handwritten sewing pattern. You can barely see it. Uh, so you have to cut out this. Let's see if I can get that on the camera. So I'm not sure. I think it is like boots or something. I'm not sure what it is. Um, and it's from uh, October 5th, 1966. And then, you know, writing um, For het in flanelle van katoen, het beleg van stevig katoen, naknippen zonder naden. Ja, I, I can't tell yet what it is. But, um, yeah, I'll take another look at that. And then I think this is some artwork by Klimt. And oh, I showed you this, I think. Um, flower and some cross stitch of a, of some cars and a tow truck. This is so cute. And then uh, some fabrics. So there are a bunch of fabrics in here. Um, wait, I have a better way of showing you this. Yeah, so there is some embroidery cloth in the middle. And then <laughs> all these kinds of cute fabrics. Very retro. And remember this? So this is uh, by um, a Dutch artist, Fiep Westendorp. And this is a, um, um, a kid's book character, Janneke, from Jip and Janneke. 
and uh, yeah, and these you've seen. So, um, so I, I was, I was unwrapping this, and I was like, "Where's the book?" <laughs> but of course, I'm, um, I'm supposed to make it myself, so that is a challenge for me. So I think because it was folded like this that I have to make that into the cover and then just sew the pages in. I don't know. But I also think it's kind of open to interpretation. And since there were a hundred made... Oh look, this is Ikea fabric. I could have guessed. Honestly, I could have guessed. Um, since there were a hundred made, I'm very curious to see what everyone else does with them. So I will be diving into this embroidery diary and uh, I just, I want the cover to be not as flimsy as um, fabric. So I'm not sure, like I have to, I have to have an idea of what to do. Um, yeah, so I will be keeping you updated on that whenever I do do something with it. So, I think we've come to the end of this podcast episode. Main things I want you to know, the Knit Along, Sock Along starts next week, Wednesday. Go and join my Facebook group, New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew. The Tornado Toes pattern will be out next week as well. Um, and if you enjoy all of the content and want more, please come and join my Patreon page because each and every subscriber is one of my cheerleaders and thank you all so so much um yeah so i'm going to leave this here i still have to edit this podcast today so i hope to be doing that today as well i hope you all have a really great day a good weekend ahead of you it's only one more day to the weekend um and i'll see y'all in two weeks time Bye bye